Are you struggling to blog consistently? Are you wondering how many blog posts you should write every week? Hi, I'm Susie. I've helped over 50,000 moms start and grow their blogs, and I want to help you too. Today, I'm going to show you kind of the schedule that I follow and that other people have followed that have grown their blog successfully. It's really pretty, it's really colorful, and it, there's a free template at the end that you can download. So stick around, you're going to learn a lot, and your life is going to be easier because you're going to have a schedule to follow. But before we get into that, would you please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you get alerted when I post a new video or go live. It is so much work to create videos as a mom of three kids. So if you're a mom out there, you understand the struggle to just get some things done while you have little kids running around. So I would super appreciate it. Now let's go into the content. All right, firstly, your blogging schedule. How often should you post? There's different frequencies. Um, that you can post on your blog, right? You can do it once per week, and that could be an in-depth, thousand-plus word blog post, really well-written, really well-researched, one per week, right? You can do it two times per week. You can do a short post and a long post. Which one works for you? Maybe you can't write two long posts in a week, but at least you can add a little bit more content because your blog is still new. You can do thrice per week. You can do a short post, a long post, and maybe a guest post. Maybe have somebody else help you with content creation. And then lastly, you could do daily blog posts. These daily blog posts work really well for kind of news or current event blogs. Um, you can do quick little roundups or just shorter posts in general. When you're just starting your blog, Posting more frequently in the beginning is helpful to kind of build that content base that you have on your blog. Even if they're crappy articles, even if they're not your best work, you can always go back and edit them. But it's kind of nice to get that the, the junk out of your system and kind of start learning how blogging works, what's your voice, how to write a really good blog post. But if you don't practice a lot, you're not going to get better. It's the same thing with exercise or learning a new skill. Blogging is a new skill for you. I'm a really terrible writer, but I do this and I build a successful blog. Even if you're a bad writer or it's your second language, you can still get better over time, right? Practice makes perfect. So if you're beginning with your blog and you're like, yes, I want to create a lot of content, but golly, it's hard. I have kids. I have a life. Maybe I have a full-time job. I have a lot of things that are taking up my time to not just be able to sit in front of my computer and write blog posts, right? Totally get it. All right. So what are the blog posts that are the fastest to create? So you're not going to spend hours in front of your computer. Maybe you can write one in-depth blog post and that could be like your, your cornerstone for that week. And that's like your, your big, task, but then you can also create faster blog posts using these methods below to generate more content on your blog. You can do guest posts, so you can ask somebody else to come a blog on your website so that they're sharing your vo their voice on your site, they're kind of building their brand and getting their, their name out there. You can do an interview post. So don't stress out about this. You're not call like you could call people, but you could also send them a couple questions in an email. So it's easy on you. It's easy on them. You could either send the same question to a group of people and get different answers, but on the same topic, or you can ask one person, Hey, I'm going to send you 10 questions. Would you fill this out? And I'm going to take it, edit it and put it into a blog post and showcase it on my website, right? It's easy on both of you. You get some content. They don't have to go write a blog post and send you a guest post. They can just fill out some questions and send that to you. Whenever somebody asks me for a guest post, I would much rather prefer the interview post where I just answer a couple questions and shoot it back to them than write a whole new blog post for their website. So if you're reaching out to somebody who might be a little busy, sending them a list of questions, not like 20 or 30 questions, maybe like seven, um, and then telling then what the benefit is for them to kind of share this on their on your website. It's really going to help you get answers. You can create a list post. People love list posts. They're easy to create. Um, you go through the 10 benefits of essential oils and you can write the 10 benefits. Those are your headings and then go through and add the content. Super simple. You can do a roundup post of your own content. So say, for example, you've been blogging a couple months, you have content and blog posts that are related to each other. So then create a list post rounding up your own blog posts. So you have, say for example, you blog about essential oils. You have all these different benefits of essential oils, of lavender, of frankincense, of 
blood orange or whatnot, um, you can create a list post of all the benefits of essential oils, and then you can link to each one of the posts that you've already written, right? So it's kind of repurposing the content you already have. You can do a roundup post of other people's blog posts. So instead of adding all 10 tips in your own blog post, maybe three are your tips and then seven are linking to other people's blog posts. And then what's a good benefit is you can take this roundup blog post that you created, share it with those people that you've linked to and ask them to share it with their audience. So it's a way to kind of build a, a relationship and hopefully to get more shares to your, to your post. You can do a current events post. These are great. They get quick little bursts of traffic. They don't last very long because it's current events, but they're shorter posts and they get a little burst of traffic if you share them immediately after you write them. You can embed a video. So if you're better on camera, if you're a great talker, maybe you can talk through the 10 benefits of essential oils and it's going to take you longer to actually write it all out. So create a quick video on the 10 benefits of whatever topic you're talking about and then embed that video onto your blog and onto YouTube as well. And then that serves kind of as a blog post. You can add a little paragraph underneath it, but instead of writing it all out, you have a little video there. People can listen to it. And eventually if that video does really well, you can go back and repurpose the content and write out the transcript for it. And then lastly, you can outsource your blog creation. If you have more money than time, then ask somebody else to write your blog post for you. All right. So if you're still DIYing all this, if this is your gig, um, how do you actually have a blogging schedule to create one blog post per week? What do you do every day? So I'm sticking with this one blog post per week because this is what most people do. Most big bloggers, they generate a lot of content in the beginning to kind of build up their blog. But after a couple months, they're like, okay, I'm going to create one per week. And then I'm going to focus more on promotion and kind of growing my email list. So the standard is kind of creating one good blog post per week. So if that's going to be your standard, what do you do every single day to kind of get to that, that rhythm of creating a blog post per week? So take this with a grain of salt. You can adjust this as it fits you, but this is what I do. So on Monday, I would publish the blog post that I created last week, right? So on Monday, I would send to my email list. I would promote it on social media and I would pin my images. On Tuesday, I would start working on my new blog post. On Tuesday, I would ask my audience, kind of inquire on Facebook, what do they want me to write about? Maybe I ha already have a topic, so I'm looking for the struggles that they're facing on this specific topic. I'll brainstorm ideas, I'll research, I'll search forums and groups, and I'll ask my audience. So Tuesday's kind of spending on brainstorming on what do I want to write? How am I going to help people with this article? Wednesday is outlining it. So now I kind of know the transformation that I want my reader to go through or what do they get out of reading my article. So I'll start outlining it. I'll do my H2 headings. I'll do common questions that my readers have, and you can even use answer the public as well. There is a template down in the description. So if you want to know exactly how to outline your blog post, I have a template down there. You can download it for free. Super helpful. On Thursday, I would get coffee and write. I would use Pomodoros to help me stay focused so that I'm actually sitting there and writing and not checking social media or answering emails or um, playing around on my phone. <laughs> so it's, it's hard for me to write. It's really hard to kind of get into the zone and focus. So it takes a lot of motivation and dedication for me to sit down. Okay, I'm like, Susie, we got to do this. It's like third person talking to myself. I have give myself a pep talk before I actually start writing a blog post. So if you struggle with this, like I love researching and kind of getting ideas. I love outlining lots of fun. The writing part, ugh, I'm really not a great writer, but I do this because I know it helps my audience. And that's kind of why I do videos too, because sometimes, Hey, I'm in the mood to create a video. And sometimes in, I'm in the mood to create a blog post when I don't want to put on makeup and look kind of cute for camera, hopefully. All right. Too much of that. Thursday, I try to write and actually create the content. Friday, I spend time editing it. So adding interlinks from that blog post to other blog posts I have on my website, adding good outbound links to high authority websites, checking my spelling and grammar, creating pin images, love to create pin images, so much fun, and then scheduling it to publish on the next Monday. All right, so this is kind of the blogging schedule. It's a standard one post per week outline. Monday, I publish the post that I worked on last week. 
Tuesday, I start working on my next post. I research and brainstorm. Wednesday, I outline. There is a template in the description below. Thursday, I write. Oh, I have to write. And then Friday, I actually edit the blog post and get it ready. So let's get into the real talk. Do I actually post a blog post every week? No. <laughs> Was my blog able to grow even without me posting consistently? Yes. In the beginning, when I just started my blog, I'm going to be honest with you, I cranked out as much content as I can. I did list posts, I did roundup posts, I did really badly, poorly written posts, but I just got all the, the, the junk out of my system so that I could learn how to be a better writer. So in the beginning, I created more content than I do now. Now I try my best to publish one blog post per week. Sometimes it's three per month, sometimes it's two per month, depending on how many other things I have going on. Now that I have over 50,000 students, there's kind of a priority on helping my students be successful. So writing content on my blog myself is on the back burner sometimes. So just to be honest with you. So I try to stick with one blog post per week. I've seen great results when I do post consistently or at least post frequently. Um, I've heard things or people say that it doesn't matter so much that you post every single Monday. That's more for you. If you can stick with that schedule that holds you accountable, but as long as you're adding new content to your blog, maybe on a Thursday, maybe on a Friday, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like guys, there's no perfect solution, but keep your blog growing. Go back to old blog posts and update them. Try to stay consistent on your blog and creating new content, and then it's going to grow but also promote, like remember to promote your stuff. Don't just post it there and like hope people will come. That's only part of the work. The rest of the work is actually promoting it and telling people about the amazing content that you created. So in the beginning, yes, it's gonna be a little harder. You're gonna have to work a little, a little bit more. You're gonna hustle because you're gonna create a lot of content to kind of build that authority and establish your blog. Once you have some authority, you have good freebies that are getting email subscribers, then we can start kind of getting to a consistent schedule of maybe once per week, maybe three times per month, and then you can kind of slow down and blog consistently. But in the beginning, it's it's a hustle, baby. We got to make that content and grow our blogs. I hope that was helpful. If you like this honest, truthful video, um, very unedited, please subscribe. I'm Susie. I hope you guys like my stuff. I'm a mom, a mom with three beautiful little kids. And um, I want to help you grow a successful blog as well. So down in the description, get that template so that you can write blog posts faster. See you next time.